Hello everyone and Happy New Year! Welcome back! I have been trying to film this video now for days and it just won't come out. It's one of those things that you have to get used to, I guess. I thought that the beginning of the year would be the perfect time to do a little recap of my closet. So go down fashion memory lane and look at the pieces that I wore the most, the ones I didn't wear at all, the ones that need to be donated or gotten rid of, the ones that need to be replaced or repaired, just to have a little fun and remember iconic style moments from the second semester of 2022. This will be focused on winter fashion just because, as you will see, my wardrobe is very limited. So my spring summer clothes are actually stored away. I didn't want to make a huge mess more than I already did. So we are just going to focus on outerwear, things that are a little bit more cozy, focus on those colder months. But if you do like the video, I can just remake the version focusing on spring summer. So let's start. One of the reasons I redid this video is because the first time I did it, I thought I would be very honest with you and show you exactly what my wardrobe looks like. And it was a scary thing to see. <laughs> so I did organize it a little bit. So here I have spring summer, some others a little bit higher up. Here I have sandals and I do have a lot more boxes like this one that I just put away because it was getting a little bit too polluted, too busy and I didn't want to distract from the matter in hand which are the actual clothes that I've been wearing. So first piece that to me has been an essential and not only this season but for the past two winter seasons because I've had this now for three years is this very simple wool coat from Zara. I wanted to show you this not only because I wear it a lot, because it's versatile, streamlined, the true basic that everybody needs to have in their wardrobe, but I have been seeing a few comments, especially when I mention pieces from fast fashion, talking about how fast fashion is not good, how the quality is always bad, how it's bad for the environment, well, I do agree to some extent. I think that fast fashion has problems just like, honestly, any other business has. I think they've been very good in the last couple of years in trying to improve and trying to deliver not only more ethical, but also higher quality products. Of course, you can still find that $5 t-shirt that is going to disintegrate after three washes. <laughs> that is just the classic in fast fashion. But they have been delivering especially brands like Zara, Mango, and other stories, H&M. They have been concerned with leveling up and stepping up their game when it comes to quality, when it comes to sustainability, when it comes to transparency, and I really do appreciate that. It comforts me as a consumer that they are actually hearing what we're saying and trying to improve. This coat is made of 75% Italian wool. Not only is it pretty, but it is also useful. It fits me really well. The shoulder line perfectly aligns with my shoulders. The sleeve length is great. So I guess this is just evidence that yes, you can find good pieces that are going to last in fast fashion as long as you know what you're looking for. I, for instance, when I bought this coat, and I think they are redoing this coat this year, if they are, I will link it down below, it came with a detachable fur collar. Thank God it was detachable because I really did not like the quality of the fur. So just to make my point, if the collar was not detachable, I would not have gotten this coat. You win some, you lose some. This one, I think, is a win. Now, going to the other side of the spectrum, this is also a coat from Zara that follows more or less the same lines as that one. So, a very masculine, like lapel, straight coat, supposed to be classic cut, but this one sucks. It's just a bad coat and I have to admit it, when I got it, I didn't think it was that bad, which just shows how much we evolve in time, be it in our personal lives, in our professional lives, or in fashion. Before coming to Italy, I didn't wear coats that much. I didn't have that need. Honestly, it's never that cold in Brazil. So 
I, my eye wasn't trained to actually finding and searching those specific details that make a coat great. In this case, a few problems. Number one, the fabric is awful. It is obviously very synthetic. It does not keep you warm. So you're just adding a useless layer that is not going to give you any type of warmth. Given that the fabric is not structured, when you hang it, it starts getting little bumps on the shoulder and around the neck, which is never great. Doesn't have a lining. Buttons are hideous. It's kind of wonky. I mean, this is something that you don't want to buy. So keep away from this try and find something like that. Just to go back on a positive note, this, also from Zara, is an amazing piece that I wore so much, especially when we started going back to the office. My company is asking us to go to the office at least three times a week. And after months and months of comfy clothing, of not having a place to go, I was so excited to be able to pull out a piece like this and actually feel dressed up and with a purpose. I think a blazer is just a magical piece in your wardrobe. This one is also made of wool, so it keeps me warm. It's a great quality fabric. It falls really great on the body. I love the double-breasted closure. The buttons are beautiful. I love that it is a black and white houndstooth, so so you can wear this with black, with white, with gray, with light blue. You can wear this even with maybe warmer tones like neutrals, like brown or this camel shade looks great. It just gives you that extra structure that maybe a normal jacket wouldn't, but a blazer is always a great way to go. Zara makes great blazers, I think. You just have to know, again, what you're looking for. And the fact that this is made of wool, I can wear it almost as a coat if I have some layers underneath. So if I have a gilet or some cashmere layers, this keeps me really, really warm, but I can also wear it by itself with a nice little top during transitional periods and it works great. One blazer that I do have to just switch up and maybe replace is this one. This is a white blazer that I've had for years and I feel like nobody talks about white blazers that much, but they make such a great pairing in your wardrobe. First of all, a white blazer goes with everything. Unlike a black blazer that might seem too sober, too serious, too boring, a white blazer just brightens you up. A really great thing to wear during winter because everybody's gray, everybody's gloomy, but when you put on a white blazer, things start looking up, right? I love this blazer just because I tailored it to me, so it is fast fashion, but I went to a tailor, got it altered just to make it so that it fit me really, really well. So the sleeves hit me just right. The tapering around the waist is just perfect. The length is not too long, but given that it is fast fashion, time has taken a toll on it and it is starting to peel up. It is starting to just not look great. The lining, I think there is a hole in here somewhere. Yeah, there you go. So I really want to invest in a good white blazer this year, probably before summer, because I also love wearing white blazers during summer. Even though it's a neutral, it is vibrant, it is light. I think it is a statement that everybody needs in their wardrobe. I have two pieces here that illustrate the same point in polar opposites, which is about getting outside of the box when you're shopping. We are kind of used to shopping the way retailers plan for us. I am conditioned to just shop in the women's section in any store. And I feel like that is such a missed opportunity. Case in point, this coat. Don't get scared, it's not a major <laughs> fashion statement, but the thing is, Milan can get very humid, it can get rainy sometimes, but I did not feel like buying an actual raincoat. I want to get myself a trench coat, like a classic Burberry one, but that does not work really well during winter when it's really cold, it doesn't keep you warm. So I just wanted to find something that was water repellent, but very, very warm inside. And I found this little coat, which has a rubberized fabric on the outside. And inside 
it has actual faux fur so it keeps you really really warm and i found it in the kit section in zara being petite as i am i do not have the benefit of having amazing long legs like claudia schiffer but i can buy the 13 14 year old age bracket at zara and be okay with it given that i have small feet i can also buy shoes so if i just want to buy a pair of sneakers that i'm going to wear till they disintegrate i can so sometimes you can find a little gem here and there this one i think it's great again it doesn't seem like much but given that it is a straight kind of trapeze shape and given that it is a neutral white color it really pairs well with a lot of other things so if I want to make it a little bit more stylish, I just put on a high neck or maybe something that is a little bit more complex in design underneath it. Maybe add some color, maybe just play around with proportions and it serves me really, really well. However, on the other end of that spectrum, uh, we can also make mistakes. During quarantine, we were at home, we were still getting the gist of it. I didn't adapt well in the beginning because as you guys know, I like to dress up, to go out and to make a little bit of an effort and staying at home all day long was just... I felt like I was wasting my clothes, my good clothes, so I wasn't wearing them. But I came to a point where I felt like I was just too, too comfortable. And I was trying to find solutions. You guys know me. I love hacks. I love quick little tricks that'll just take your look to the next level. And I came across this one, <laughs> which are maternity jeans i'm not pregnant i wasn't pregnant and i shouldn't have bought these because number one for them to actually stay on your body you have to have a bump to fill this up i was eating a lot but not enough to actually fill this whole elastic band and they kept falling off so it completely defeated the purpose every time i had to go out i had to take them off and put on normal pants so at the end of the day they were just stay at home pants i am not a fan of jeans that are stretchy that are too tight that almost look like leggings and this is what they are so it just goes to show that yes you can think outside of the box for instance you saw a beautiful shirt in the men's section that you think would look great if you roll up sleeves and tuck it into your pants great maternity pants it's a little too much out of the box get a little closer to the box in my search for comfortable clothes this year i really went crazy with the knit and the wool it has become a trend be it fair isle be it cable knit alpine motifs I have been really into the classic wool and I have been trying to find sweaters that are delicate but still warm. First one is this one from Another Stories. I showed you this in a haul. It is such a simple piece. I think that once you look at it, you think it's really boring, but it is extremely versatile, very transitional and easy to style. The fact that it is a cardigan means you can wear this alone as a top, but you can also wear it over something else. I love wearing this with a turtleneck underneath it gives me the warmth of the wool this is 100% wool but not the bulk of a big sweater it's also great for layering under a coat exactly because these sleeves are elbow length so when you fold your arms you don't feel all puffy and squishy is the perfect little pairing if you're at home and it is a little bit chilly and you just don't want to throw a blanket over yourself be a little bit more presentable you put something like this on and you're already warmer but still look cute and the second one that i really wanted to show you was one that i got specifically for the festive season so for christmas for new years we knew that we wouldn't be able to travel we weren't planning on going to any big parties so it really didn't make sense to pull out a cocktail dress me and my husband agreed that it would be a casual laid back kind of christmas new year thing but being me i was not about to you know drink my champagne while wearing gym clothes so i wanted to find a nice compromise and i came across this one this is a cardigan from h&m same oatmeal kind of color from the another stories sweater 
but this one has one a v-neck which makes it a little bit sexier if you're wearing it by itself with nothing underneath and i love that it has these beautiful rhinestone buttons so even though you're very comfy and you're very cozy, you still have a little bit of glitter, a, bit of, a little bit of sparkle. You can use it as a layering piece. One of those little items that seem simple but bring me so much joy just by little details like this. For the pieces that I didn't get to wear a lot this year but I wish I had, first off, this little top that I love. I've been mocked over and over again for wearing this, but I love the design of it. It is a mock neck with little fur details on the sleeves. It is a little bit cropped, so you can wear it with high waist pants or skirts. And I never get to wear this, and I don't know why. I think it should be my new year resolution to style this at least five different ways so that I can get use out of it. It is not high quality, it's not a designer piece, nothing spectacular, but I just love how it looks. It reminds me so much of, what movie was that? charade with Audrey Hepburn when she is in that ski resort. I think she could totally be wearing something like this. What do you guys think? Do you have any recommendations on how to style this? I mean, it is so cute. I love it so much. Do you think? Is it ugly? I don't care. I'll wear it anyway. A piece that I wish I could wear over and over again if I could, but I have worn it I think two times, which is a shame, is this top. It is fringy, it is festive, it is flirty, but I never wear it. I think it's because it is a spaghetti strap and I feel a little conscious about how kind of fatty my arms are. But I just love it. I think it's so fresh, it's very young, great for going out to dancing or to a little party. I don't know, I think it's too naked for me maybe. But a lot of people have been telling me that I should be more experimental and a little bit more daring with how I dress. So I might try and style this this summer. I am absolutely not getting rid of this, but this is also something that I need to learn how to style and just make a little extra effort just to make sure that I get my use out of this. It deserves to be seen. And I could not make a recap video about things that I wore this year without mentioning my scarves. I love scarves. I tell everyone about them. I made a video specifically for them. Great for adding a touch of color, a touch of texture, a touch of print. They make everything look so much more put together and beautiful. So yes, scarves forever. Honorable mention to my Ferragamo scarf. I've talked about this a lot. I have rambled on and on and on about how much I love this scarf. So I'm not going to talk about when I got it or how I got it. You can watch my video here. But something that I didn't mention before and that I think is worth sharing is the fact that this did show me a level of quality that I had never had with any other scarf. So I guess my point is if you can buy things that are made well with great materials that have been constructed in a way that will last forever, try and aim for that. It doesn't have to be a designer brand, doesn't have to be boutique, it doesn't have to be thousands and thousands of dollars for one piece. But try vintage shops, try consignment stores, garage sales, estate sales. So if you can, if you can allow yourself to do that, try and have a few pieces in your wardrobe that maybe cost a little bit more but also deliver a thousand times more quality just so you don't have to keep replacing that piece over and over again. And to wrap up this video, let's talk about jewelry because what is a video of mine without talking about jewelry? This year I feel like I managed to round up my jewelry collection. I feel like all of my pieces I love. I don't feel like I have redundancies. I think that I have every occasion and situation covered. So from a very casual day in the beach to a gala dinner, I feel like I have enough accessories to cover all of those bases. My favorite piece to wear in terms of jewelry is always going to be earrings. So a few of the ones that I wore a lot this year were 
these ones great for day to day the fact that they are gold they are slightly bigger really do bring attention to your face and take a very blah boring look to the next level these ones to me are the most worn first of all because they have a very special place in my heart because my husband gifted them to me just simple pearls with the little diamond in the middle just to give it a little point of light pearls are the most neutral jewelry you can have they go with every skin tone every color of hair pearls are a symbol of elegance and sophistication all over the world so these are truly precious to me and a great find from this year in terms of jewelry is this beautiful pearl necklace this i got at an antiques market in portugal i do feel like they look quite amazing three strands the coloring is kind of a pinkish tone so great for my complexion given that i have warmer tones i think that it goes really well it doesn't clash it's not too stark for instance i'm wearing this very normal very uneventful top but just by adding a strand of pearls I look like I'm going somewhere and that I know what I'm doing. So this is it, everyone. These are the pieces that I wanted to show you. Maybe you can leave a comment talking about the pieces that you wore a lot, the ones that you didn't wear so much, maybe those that you want to add to your wardrobe because that's what keeps the world turning, right? I would also like to take this moment to thank you guys again for an amazing 2021. For those who subscribed, who left comments, constructive criticism, who shared it with their friends, who have really interacted and made the channel what it is today. I have to admit that before starting, I was really afraid of, you know, you hear about trolls and you hear about people being negative and trying to hurt your feelings all the time, but I have been really lucky and the big, great majority of you who left me comments have been so sweet, so supportive and so kind. So I just wanted to thank you so much for setting the tone of the channel to a very classy and a very loving place maybe 2022 will be the year of growth for the channel and we will just find even more amazing classy polite loving ladies to add to our club wishing you all an amazing 2022 not only filled with beautiful things and chicness and elegance but also with health with love with friendship, with beautiful moments that you will never forget. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see each other again next time. Bye.